Welcome back. We've got a special story for you now from a familiar face about hometown flavor as KOM's Tomas Mongolonia, who is now a graduate student at Stanford, reports about Probetu, the only Chamorro restaurant in the Bay Area. It's a business that's relied on its island roots and work ethic to make it through the pandemic. With smoke, char, sour, high acid, you know, is, is uh, the main players in our, our cuisine. Soy sauce nowadays has made its way into our cuisine pretty heavily. Um, Finadeni is the mother sauce of all, all things, and that's just a, a typical, I mean, a, a very um, sort of staple sauce made of something uh, salty, something sour, and something aromatic like an onion. So the most common soy sauce, vinegar, onions, and hot pepper. And coconut. <laughs> coconut is a big, you know, like it's the tree of life on Guam and provides for all aspects of life. And we never forget that here. And we try to convey that to people. Here at Perpetua, it's an all-encompassing experience. Like we don't want them just to eat. We want to put the, the food in, a, in a, a greater context to tell them about our history, to tell them about our current situation um, and, you know, all the struggles that come along with that. I always say that Chamorro food is, um, you know, like one of the, like a, a very natural, um, I hate to use the word fusion, but a, a natural sort of mix of uh, outside influences, particularly colonialism, uh, starting with the Spanish who stopped in Guam. So there's a lot of Spanish influence, empanadas, ceviches, uh, just to name a few. So it's sort of a, an island style uh, cuisine with a Spanish uh, influence, uh, a big time Asian influence. Um, but it's really hard to describe in a few words, you know, you really got to come and try it for yourself. The chef, Chef Sean Napati and I, um, he called me, he's my partner. He called me one day in 2014 and said, and we had been talking about doing something like this for a long time. We'd been in the industry for a long time. Um, he, he is back, back of the house and me is front of the house. And uh, in 2014, he called me and he said, hey man, I got an opportunity in this spot, um, in our old location. Um, and honestly, that's all I needed to hear. And the rest is history. Like I quit my job that day. Um, we, you know, he went back home for a month. I stayed back and did all the cleaning and kind of prepping the space. He went back home for a little inspiration and in, in, ingredient getting. Um, and we opened on like a really shoestring budget, you know, it was like less than 10 grand. But it gave us a platform to, you know, present Chamorro food, food that we grew up eating um, in a city that's looking for something new. We opened in December, uh, and so during that time, uh, we were banging. Uh, we were full every day. We were getting so much press. Three months uh, in, we you know got a big review in the Chronicle, and then COVID hit. Um, and so we pivoted in the early days to to go and uh, pit takeout, and that really was not our forte. We just didn't know how to do it, and that's a whole new. It's a whole new model and a whole new skill as restaurant owners, and we just didn't know how to do it well. Hospitality and service is a core value and a, you know inside of us, and a lot of times we're being stretched real thin, and it you know really it, it hurts us because we want to give the best hospitality as possible. Once we uh, moved over here, our community came out for us strong. Not just Chamorros and Guamanians, but everybody who tried Chamorro food and fell in love with it. You know, they, they have been behind our backs and lifted us up when, when a lot of restaurants are struggling.
Birthday shout outs are next. Don't go anywhere.